let the church say amen to that. I appreciate that, uh, Marco. Uh, because I did not uh, register in time, that means that I came without a mentor. So I got to thinking, who is going to introduce me? Then I just had to ask this brother over here, and he did a fine job and said some very illustrious things. And I appreciate that. And to the other ministers who preceded me, well, you all got the ground right. And thank you all for sowing into the lives of these individuals. If you have your Bibles with you, let's go ahead and turn to the book of Habakkuk. And we're going to look up the uh, third chapter beginning at the 17th verse. And once you have arrived, I'm just going to ask you to please stand. You've been sitting for a while so we can stand for the word of God. And as we look at Habakkuk and the third chapter in the 17th verse, this book is found between Nahum and Zephaniah. You're struggling. Okay. And it reads in Habakkuk in the third chapter in the 17th verse, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the field, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me to walk on my high heels. I would just like to speak to you for a second on the thought, a resolution to rejoice. You may be seated. Lord, we come to you right now thanking you for this moment, for this preaching moment. It cannot take place without you, O oh God. Now, Lord, speak to me as I speak to your people, for I have studied, but Lord, I need your strength. Yeah. And I have prepared, but now I need your power. And I'm willing and I want to, but Lord, only you can make me able. So, Lord, I stand here right now, ready, my Lord, thy will to see. Now open my eyes and illumine yeah. me, spirit divine. Amen. Each and every year at the end of December, if you watch TV, whether it be Entertainment Tonight, the Today Show, Inside Edition, you will find a trend on your television set, and they come in a myriad of ways called the year in review, the mm -hmm. top 10 of the year. And these particular uh, videos and these particular segments tend to reflect on what happened in the years past. I'm sure some of you called a couple of a weeks ago as these events take us from January to December, displaying the highs and the lows from here and there. They look at different parts, what happened in entertainment and what happened in sports and what happened in politics. They just cause us to reflect. And, and I like these in particularly because it reminds me of things that I might have just forgotten about because by the time you get to December, frankly, January and February were a long time ago. And in the midst of these reviews, we remember deaths and disasters. We remember the scandals and the celebrations while also looking at these reviews to gain a sense of perspective on how we will tag the past year. When looking at these particular segments, we try to reason and we try to come up with a theme as to how will we leave our 2012s in the record books? How will we sum up our ministries? What will we say? Uh, how do we preach? Where do we go? What opportunities did we have? And we will use these as a guide, as a reference for years to come as this happened this year. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And also for these, while they remind us, they should cause Christians to struggle. I wrestle when I watch these year in reviews, especially one in 2012 where I found that there was mass shootings in theaters, in our schools, in shopping malls, and even in our places of worship. I wrestled this year when I watched the end of the reel conclude that our government in these United States of America were allowing its people to hang off of a fiscal cliff. I wrestled with the fact that when nations are still rising against nations this year in 2011, and I wondered as a Christian, how do I deal with that? But furthermore, as a minister of God, how do I wrestle 
wrestle with this thing. How do I put a tag on it this year? And it leaves me asking the question, what should we do? It would suggest, as we look back on this year and even years prior to that, that the evil are prospering while the righteous continue to suffer. Well, this is no new thing, and the subject of our text is a prophet named Habakkuk. Yeah, wow. Habakkuk is wrestling with this very same issue. In his book, Habakkuk chronicles his transition literally from frustration to faith. In his attempt to understand God's way, Habakkuk questions God. If you ever read the book, you see a question from Habakkuk, then you see an answer from God, then a question from Habakkuk, and then an answer from God. And God gives no literal answer, but he quotes a very familiar verse saying, the righteous shall live by faith. And as we, at this point in the book, Habakkuk begins, to place his confidence in God. And in chapter three, in verse 17, he says that even though the fig tree may not blossom, nor there be fruit on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off or the food or from the fold, or there be no herd in the, steel, in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. At this point, Habakkuk is in a quandary, but he makes a profound conclusion that I don't understand what might happen next. I don't understand if what should happen will really happen. I don't understand how this whole thing is going to work out. Matter of fact, I don't know what my 2013 looks like. I don't know whether I'll get into seminary. I don't know whether I will graduate. I don't know whether I will preach again. I don't know how the ministry will turn out. But I've come to the conclusion that I will rejoice in Habakkuk does the very same thing. He says that I can rejoice for three reasons. The first thing that comes up in the test is Habakkuk says, I will rejoice because he saved me. Yes, Verse 18 says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk firstly proclaims that the object of his rejoicing is his salvation. He literally changes his perspective from looking at the world around him to looking at himself. And when he looks at himself, he is reminded that he is who he is only because the Lord has saved him. Yeah. Habakkuk literally says that he will rejoice in the God of his salvation. He points out that his joy can't be found anywhere else but in God. Habakkuk's joy moves from being based on his circumstance to his salvation. And I've come to the conclusion at the end of last year going into this year that friends will fail me and that my family may not always answer when I call. I've learned that the stock market has a way of fluctuating and going up and down. I've learned that ministry can sometimes have its highs and lows, but one thing that I always have is my salvation. And I've learned just to get joy all by myself when I think about how the Lord has saved me. Habakkuk says, I will rejoice. Because the Lord saved me. I really like the way the singer Richard Smallwood said, he said, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that is good and perfect, it comes from you, for you're the heart of my contentment. You're the hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. A resolution to rejoice. Firstly, there he says, I'll rejoice because the Lord saved me. But secondly, he reminds us that he will rejoice because the Lord strengthens him. In verse 19, the Lord God, he says, the Lord God is my strength. Habakkuk reminds us that all of his strength comes from the Lord. Even though he may not understand everything that God is requiring him to do, he realizes that the God who is requiring him to do it will give him the strength to do it. 
And when you really look at the contents of the whole book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is really saying, I don't have the strength to do what God has called me to do, but the God who has called me to do it will give me strength. But, but just like that didn't get y'all, that didn't get me either. So I went to the Holman Christian Standard Bible and it said, Yahweh, Lord, my Lord is my strength. And, and that blessed me because as we've uh, heard several times in this conference about the God of the past and the God of the present and the God of the future and literally translated Yahweh means he is, he will and he was. And so I learned that Habakkuk was really saying he will give me strength because he is giving me strength and he has given me strength. And so when I look back at 2012, I can say sometimes I was weak and, and sometimes I was weary, but the Lord gave me strength. And even as I'm standing here right now I, and I'm preaching to you, I, I realize that I'm not doing it on my own abilities, but it's because of the strength of the Lord. So I can look to January 5th and, and I can look all through 2013 and say I'm going to live based on the Lord's strength and that right there is enough for me to rejoice all by myself. Is there anybody here who says I can rejoice because the Lord has given me strength and the Lord will give me strength but I will praise him right now because he is giving me strength. Habakkuk says I will rejoice firstly because the Lord saved me. Secondly because the Lord strengthens me, and I'm about to leave you alone. But he says, finally, I'm going to rejoice because the Lord will sustain me. Habakkuk closes his book after many woes, after questioning God, after wondering if his prophecy would really be fulfilled. And he says in verse 19 that the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. He will make me walk on my high heels. Habakkuk says the Lord will make his feet like that of a deer. Habakkuk literally says when you look at the anatomy of a deer's foot, it is designed to provide the deer with stability despite the deer's terrain. That literally, no matter where the deer goes, okay. the footsteps of the deer is sustained no matter his environment. Okay. Uh -huh. That the deer can move from high terrain to low terrain, that the topography can change from location to location. Let me see if I can make it plain. The deer can move from the mountain tops into the valley, but he can be sustained by his feet. And I said, okay, Habakkuk, I get what you're saying, but I got to apply this to myself. And I said, why should I rejoice about this, Habakkuk? And he said, well, as you look back on the reels and the years of in review of 2012, you said that you saw some highs and some lows. And you saw some good things happen, but you saw your share of bad things as well. He said that if you're real with yourself, 2013 will carry on the same characteristics. There will be some highs and there will also be some lows. But he said your feet can be made uh, like deer's feet. And he said that you can go from the good times uh, to the bad times and the Lord will continue to sustain you. You can walk on your mountain tops and you can walk in the valleys of the shadow of death, but the Lord will sustain you. So I have a reason to rejoice on this afternoon. Well, it's not noon yet or we almost might be there, but I'm glad about it because I got a reason. I can rejoice and I'm aware that the Lord will sustain my footsteps. So I need 
need a little help in the house and I want to know is anybody excited that the Lord is sustaining your steps on this afternoon? Are you excited? Can you rejoice in the fact that the Lord will keep you? Yes, Habakkuk says literally, because the Lord sustains me, I won't lose my balance. That no matter what happens next, no matter what comes after this, and I won't get off track. And no matter what the perils of ministry might be, the Lord will sustain my footsteps. No matter how many people talk about me or who won't support my ministry, the Lord will sustain my footsteps. But Habakkuk still ends it on a high note. He says at the end of verse 19, that he will make me to walk upon my high hills. He had just referred to the deer, to the stability of the, the deer, and he said that the deer will be sustained in its highs and in its lows, but Habakkuk ends by talking about his highs. He, he doesn't reference the valleys of life. And I'm about to close right now, but I'm really excited about rejoicing this morning. And I'm going to always remain on a high note because Habakkuk said that he will make me walk upon my hills. So I have no problem following what David said when he said, this is the day that the Lord has made and, and we will rejoice yeah. and be glad in it. I don't worry about what Paul wrote to the church at Philippi because he says rejoice um, in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. So this year in 2012 uh, others have made their resolutions to lose weight, uh, to get out of debt, but my resolution is to rejoice. Yes. Yes. Yes.